Hello and welcome to the Oak and Lamb YouTube channel. My name is Becca Oaks. I'm an owner and craft educator here at Oak and Lamb. Probably my favorite part about the whole creative process when I am crafting with my die cut machine or my laser cutter is actually creating the graphic or design that I'm going to be printing or cutting. I love graphic design and I know a lot of you all do as well. I know a lot of you struggle with it too and so that's why I wanted to do this video which is five design mistakes you might be making in design space. So let's jump to number one. Number one is that you are not kerning your fonts. Let's take a look at what I mean by that. Kerning fonts refers to the space in between your letters. If you are using a cursive font like this, then you do not want to leave space in between your letters. These should all be touching like this word right here. Thankfully, Design Space has created an update where most fonts are automatically kerned. However, that's not always the case. So make sure when you are designing that your cursive fonts are all touching each other like they're supposed to. The second design issue that I see in design space is that you aren't using glyphs and special characters and fonts. Maybe it's because you don't know how to do that. Maybe you don't even know what glyphs are. Let's take a look at what they are and how you can easily use them in design space. I am using a MacBook and Mac has a software or a program rather that is default with a MacBook that is called FontBooks. And so any font that you have installed on your computer, you can access right here. If you view this way, then you see all of the normal characters, the A through Z and all the numbers here. If you access this view, then you can see all of the different characters that are available. Punctuation, lowercase, uppercase, special characters over them, and then a lot of fonts will have even more special characters. See, they have some extra tails, some curly cues on here, and a lot of fonts like this one will have several options for letters. So there's three different T options here. There are options for specific letters that are next to each other that flow really nicely with the next letter and even multiple letters. Not all fonts have these options. However, if you download and pur or purchase and download a font and there's a TTF file option or an OTF file option, if you choose the OTF file option and download it, install it on your computer, then a lot of times it does have these special characters. Now, how do you access those and why do you wanna use them in design space? That's one thing that is frustrating to me. When you're in design space, there is no way to easily access those glyphs. You can see here, this font is just the regular font that comes up when I type. No special characters, no special letters. This one right here has a few special characters. We have a fun tail right here on the P. This S is a little bigger and a little more fun. The B is a little bit different. The R has a tail on it and this S is also different. Now, this looks really cute. However, this one is over the top, top notch, really great. So to access the special characters here in Design Space, what I want to do is insert my text box and we'll just put in pies and I'm going to select the font that I'm going to be using. And then what I can do is reference this guide right here. So let's look and see what all is available. I'm gonna use this P. So I'm going to copy it by pressing Command C on my computer. If you are using a PC, then it will be Control C. Then I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to delete this P and paste the other one here into my text box. Then I can do the same thing with my S. So let's delete this one come back over to our font book and then we're going to find a fun S to use. Let's copy this one and then we'll paste it here in this text box. And now you can edit like normal. So access those special characters and use them to make things look adorable and different than your competitors who are creating files. 
The third mistake that I see a lot is relying on the alignment tools to align your graphic. Just because it aligns with those alignment tools, whether horizontally or vertically, doesn't mean it's necessarily pleasing to the eye. Sometimes you have to just look at it and make a decision that doesn't go with the normal alignment tools. Let's take a look at what exactly I mean. Let's take, for instance, these graphics here. Now, it's whisk taker, which is a funny pun, <laughs> but what I'm looking at here, when I select both of these layers and align them horizontally, center horizontally, this is what it looks like. Now, when you're looking at this, the bulk of the top layer is right here. The body of the top layer is right here. The body of this is right here. And so it looks a little bit off kilter when you allow design space to align it center horizontal. See how this one is aligned and centered with the bulk of the text instead of using the extra flourishes right here to help align it. That's one thing that I really like to stress is use your judgment and your creative eye sometimes in designs like this to really make it look fluid and professional. The fourth design mistake that I wanna talk about today is unlocking size lock ratios and distorting images. What do I mean by that? It can be really tempting to know that I need to put a text in a specific size rectangle. For instance, we made a project like this on a live and it was this ratio. We wanted to put welcome to our patch on it and um, it can be tempting to want to fill this void space right here with our text, but this text is not designed to be a tall, skinny font or text. It's designed to be more short and squatty. So sometimes the temptation can be to come up here and unlock this size lock ratio so that we can make it taller. However, you have to be careful with that because it really just starts looking like you've distorted your text. Um, there are fonts that you can get away a little bit with this without making it look ridiculous, but in my opinion, fonts like these specifically do look distorted. It does not look natural, and so be careful with that. This same rule applies to designs as well. You wouldn't necessarily want to take a round basketball and unlock the, so unlock the size lock ratio and make it oblong because a basketball is not oblong. That's just one example, but there are lots more. So steer clear of the temptation to just fill space by distorting images to fill those spaces. The last design mistake that I want to talk about is pretty crucial. I would love to encourage you not to actually design in design space. Now, hear me out. I, when I started with my Cricut journey and started designing, I did all the design work in design space. It's all I knew. It was very easy because that's what I knew. However, you can't save it and export it as an SVG. So if I create this absolutely amazing graphic in design space, I've spent all of this time and energy to create it, and I want to send it to a friend or I want to sell it because it's really amazing, I can't save it and export it as an SVG file or a PNG file in order to send it to someone. Now, you can take a screenshot of an image. You can remove the grid lock on the back, screenshot the image, and save it as a PNG that way if you wanted to. However, the resolution is not going to be great on that, so I don't encourage that as well. I encourage you to pick a design software that you can love and you can learn and start designing in those softwares, especially if it's gonna be something that there's a lot of design work to. If it's just a word or something like that that you're adding to a graphic, it's fine to do that in design space. That's not a lot of time and energy loss. But if you're creating lots of graphics and slicing and welding and contouring and doing all of these things, you want to be able to save your work properly. I would love to invite you to take a look at the link below. We have just released a brand new Illustrator course at Oak and Lamb. It is a 33 video course where I teach you how to create your own cut files, 
your own SVGs and PNGs using Adobe Illustrator. I love Adobe Illustrator and cut file creation is one of my favorite things. In fact, I spend quite a bit of time just creating cut files for fun, not even necessarily that will go on our website or that I'll be using for projects. I just love creating. If you love creating as well, if you see files that other people create and you're like, man, I would really like that, but I wanna change X, Y, and Z on it, then this this course is for you. Uh, it's kind of like an illustrator for dummies. It is a beginner course, but at the end of the course, you're going to need or you're going to learn and have the knowledge to create any type of cut file that you want. In addition to the 33 videos, we have access to our private illustrator Facebook, where you'll get continued support from me and other students who are in the class. So if you have design issues along your way, you can post those issues, screenshots or videos in that private Facebook group. And I will weigh in as well as other students to help you fix those issues. That will help you become a confident and proficient graphic designer. So click the link below. It is automatically discounted for you $50 off to make the course $150. Let us know if you have any questions about that and like this video if you liked these design tips. If you aren't a subscriber here to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. It's free to do so. And you can turn on notifications so that you know when we are live and when we post new content. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you here another day for another video.